Hello there. Thank you, thank you. Flavored coffees. You might be familiar with something along the lines of this when I say the words flavored coffee. This is in fact the limited edition seasonal pumpkin spice flavored coffee from Starbucks because tis the season. But there are many, many, many different types of flavored coffees. Too many to count, in fact. There is banana cream pie flavored coffee. There is caramel cream flavored coffee. There is apple crisp flavored coffee. There is, there are other ones as well as we will find out today. But in fact, they are very common and pretty much every sort of flavor combination you can think of that is related to coffee probably exists out there. And flavored coffee Coffee kind of exists for two reasons. Number one, there's there's a demand for it. Frequently people will want coffees that perhaps taste different than your traditional, just like this is a chocolatey, chocolatey medium roast. They want something a little bit more interesting or they want something that tastes different without them necessarily having to add cream or sugar or sweetener or syrup or, you know, whatever it is. The other side of it is that companies, coffee companies will frequently, not always, but frequently have either an excess of coffee or an excess of coffee that is perhaps not as fresh as they would want it to be if they were selling it as is, like right off roast. So what sometimes happens is that coffee companies will take these beans that are perhaps not at their ideal, you know, ideal levels of being, they will take them, they will add natural or artificial flavors or some combination of both until they have flavored coffees, which taste completely different and mask those perhaps lesser qualities that the coffee has developed over time. Again, this is not a hard rule. There are companies that don't do this, but this is some way for people to avoid waste in coffee. I have taken it upon myself to find some questionable flavored coffees. <laughs> If you will, I don't even know if questionable is the right term, but I have purchased them. I brought them here for us today to try. Let me tell you about them. I have five coffees of varying degrees of mm, okayness that I'm very interested in trying because flavored coffees to me have always been very interesting. The fact that we can now at this stage in, in the world get coffees to taste like things like Bananas Foster is nuts to me. That, that is very strange and I am a bit fearful of what I have in front of me, but I'm also a little bit excited. So let me tell you what I have procured for us on this lovely, lovely Friday morning. Now, the first thing I have is arguably one of the more like normal of the coffees. This is a dark chocolate cherry, if you can see my, my sloppy scrawl here, dark chocolate cherry flavored coffee from Red Brick Roasting Company. Now, this is something that I purchased in a supermarket from one of those like bulk coffee sections. Very fun, you get to like pull the lever, you get to like hold your bag, it's, it's great. I really enjoy those, but it's kind of a normal flavor. Like dark chocolate and cherry are common tasting notes in coffee, especially like darker roasts. And like, that sounds pleasant. Like I would drink something that tastes like dark chocolate and cherry. So this makes sense. So we have this. Now we're getting a little bit weirder, uh, pardon the pun, because we have this coffee from Weirdo Coffee Roasting, who in fact do many different flavored coffees. But what I have here is bubblegum coffee. That's right, I said bubblegum flavored coffee. This is pre-ground. I didn't have the option at the time to buy whole beans, so we have pre-ground coffee from them. Various things could go wrong or perhaps very right. Now we're getting a little bit funkier. This right here is from a company called Larissa Veronica and they are a company that does a lot of like wholesale and kind of like raw ingredient sales. So they will have packages of spices and or coffees and or like a whole bunch of stuff. Coffee isn't their main thing but they do happen to sell it. They've got some interesting ones. So let me at least tell you the name of this coffee. This coffee is called Strawberry Cotton Candy Costa Rica Coffee. It is four ounces of it. Let me show you the back because when I ordered this, I was assuming it was just, you know, the natural and artificial flavors of strawberry and coconut as most of these are. This is not. <laughs> so when I received my bag, this is what I saw on the back. So already there are things that are not coffee in this bag, but then, then I decided to shuffle around a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but those are sprinkles. There are sprinkles inside my coffee. All of this was very exciting to me. So then I decided to look on the front and I noticed that there was in fact a nutritional label and an ingredients list, which is significantly different than any of these other coffees that we have here today. Starting off, we have Costa Rica whole coffee beans. Very glad that that is the first ingredient. I was questioning that a little bit when I peeked around at the back. Next up, we have dried strawberries, FDNC yellow number 35, American saffron and natural flavors. All right, so this one is gonna be fun. Now we have our last two. These ones are instilling deep fear in my heart right now. So let me just show them to you. First off, we have jalapeno coconut coffee because isn't that what we all want first thing in the morning? I know I don't know how I feel about it. Will it be good? Mm. This is from a company that I found called Coffee 
a.m. It says exclusively roasted for your enjoyment. So whatever that means. We have very little information about it besides the fact that there was coffee and the natural and artificial flavors in it. That's about it. There is no tasting notes. There are no anything else. It's just kind of a, a mysterious bag of mysterious beans. So there is that. And then we have our last one. This right here is spicy taco coffee. Give me a second. I feel better now. <laughs> I really do. Once more, this is from Coffee AM. It is roasted for my enjoyment. That strikes fear in my heart at this moment. And once again, coffee, natural and artificial flavors. So this is gonna be a, a whole bunch of fun. We have our five coffees of varying severity. I think we should grind them up. I think we should brew them. I think we should taste them. And I think we should talk about what they taste like because there's some wild claims mixed up in here about what these flavors are gonna be like. I'm doing this so you don't have to. I'm gonna go get started with this. And now I wanna give a huge thank you to today's sponsor of this just absolute insanity. <laughs> I want to give a huge thank you to Care Of for sponsoring today's video. You may have seen me partner with them before, but in case you forgot, with Care Of, you'll be able to get 30 beautifully packaged daily servings of vitamins to fit you and your lifestyle each month. Now, back when I got started with Care Of, two of the things I was already working on were getting back into longer runs and improving my sleep. With this info, Care Of recommended me things like fish oil with omega-3 fatty acids and magnesium to help with muscle recovery. But everyone's goals are different, so with Care Of's quick quiz, they'll help you figure out what will be best for your lifestyle and your needs. Also, each of Care Of's packets has some sort of fun quote or question or phrase to start your day off, which is a really nice touch alongside their compostable packaging. So if you are ready to get started with Care Of's quick five minute quiz to figure out what vitamins and supplements can help you get started with your own goals, click the link in the description and use my code DRINKCOFFEE50 for 50% 50 off your first order of Care Of. And thank you again to Care Of for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back. There are a lot of smells going on right now and I'm I'm not someone who has a really good sense of smell. In fact, I have a pretty bad sense of smell. There are some pungent things here in front of me. Let me talk to you about some of the things I have experienced since 60 seconds ago. Now we have on our far side, the dark chocolate cherry coffee. This smells like an artificial cherry scent. It honestly, in fact, smells kind of like maraschino cherries coated in dark chocolate. So I think that's a good thing. I think it smells like what it's supposed to smell like. These beans were on the lighter side, which is kind of nice. Usually uh, flavored coffees tend to be a little bit more on the, on the darker spectrum. So having a lighter roast coffee could be really enjoyable. Now we have our bubblegum coffee. This one took me for a surprise. Now I have not opened up any of these previous to grinding them just now because I wanted us to experience this together. If I'm doing it, you have to do it too. But I did find something interesting. When you poke around inside, you are able to find these hard little like balls of pink flavoring, if you will, which leads me to believe that they didn't in fact spray their beans with, you know, whatever like natural and artificial flavors they were adding post roast, but they might've just mixed in their flavor in the form of these little like things that are gonna dissolve when we brew the coffee. Kind of an interesting idea and different than what the rest of these are. So that's kind of fun and surprising. Next up, we have our very interesting kind of amalgamation of things that is come together to make our cotton candy strawberry coffee. All in all, the sprinkles kind of came apart. There are some still kind of significant chunks of our dried strawberry that did not want to cooperate. So I think this is going to be a very interesting brew. I've never brewed sprinkles with my coffee before. I'm kind of excited about that. I hope that works nicely. <laughs> it is just really adding sugar to your coffee, but I do that anyway. So if I can shorten that process and it tastes good, nothing wrong with that. I am intrigued, however, by the saffron. I've never added saffron before to my coffee, so things to try. And then the two others that we have here. First of all, the jalapeno coconut coffee. This is not a flavor combination that I have ever wanted in my life. I am sure, I am positive. There are people who like and chase after this flavor combination. That person is not me. And I think smelling this really solidified that for me. And then the last one, our spicy taco coffee. Opening up the bag to this coffee, I suppose we're calling it, for the first time was a truly unique experience because you know those like those spice packets one might buy if you're making like a taco meat filling or like a taco meat like substitute or whatever you're doing, you then like shake it into like whatever you're making and you get like a spiced meat or whatnot. It smells like they just shook a packet of that into the coffee, which 
I guess makes it a spicy taco coffee. Like it is very alarmingly accurate of what it is called. So I don't know how to feel about this one. I'm so nervous and terrified and excited all at the same time. It's like this like strange like cocktail of emotions happening within me every time I smell this. Let's brew all of these. Let's do a side-by-side -side taste test. Now, I'm gonna use my Bona Vita Drip Brewer because for consistency and my sanity's sake, I think this is gonna be the best option, as well as the fact that I think most people who have flavored coffees are probably just using a drip brewer of some sort. So I think this will be the most accurate way to taste all of these. Ah, the sounds of brewing. <laughs> Round one is complete. Next up, we are on to our bubble gum. And I will note that in between each round, I am cleaning out my carafe and coffee brewer as much as possible because we want to avoid cross-contamination because this is science. All right, well, we have brewed five very interesting cups of coffee. This little buddy did fantastic, so I'm gonna reward him with giving him a very, very long bath in Kafisa before I brew more coffee tomorrow morning. Let us taste some coffees. Now, I'm letting these all cool till they reach kind of a, a reasonable drinking temperature because I'd like to cup them all rather than just sip them. But while that happens, I do want to mention one thing that I was thinking about through the entire process of buying these and have now had a chance to really like look into now that I physically have the bags in my hands and that is the roast date of these coffees. Now when I buy coffees one of the most important things I look for besides like the flavor profile that I'm going for is going to be the roast date. That being the date that the coffee was roasted and it's a, it's a good measure to kind of like gauge the freshness of the coffee. I like to buy coffees that are kind of within one to two weeks of roasting that way I still have like a good amount of time to enjoy it once I'm grounded or you know have stored it away in my containers at home. And like flashback to a little bit earlier when I talked about flavored coffees often being a way that, you know, coffee companies offload perhaps more stale or older coffees that they're not able to sell as is. With that information, I decided to look if we had any roast dates happening on our bags. No roast dates to be found, so interesting. Now, when you go on sites like Coffee AM, I'm looking right now at the product listing, it does in fact say, and to quote, each batch is roasted to order and shipped on the same day. So you can be sure that your spicy taco coffee arrives at peak freshness and flavor. Now, while that's the claim, there is in fact no roast date on this. There is not really a way to track that. So do with that information what you will. To me, that's always like a slight red flag when there's no like kind of like traceable evidence of when your coffee came to be or where it came to be. But that's something that I would just like pay attention to when looking at flavored coffees. Cause it's I'm kind of interesting to see like there's some corners, you know, frequently cut when it comes to them. Oh, I also want to note, we do have some tasting notes on the website that I missed previously when I was purchasing the coffee. For our spicy taco coffee, we have taco spices and beef makes for one truly unique flavored coffee. If there is a tasting note I have never ever wanted to see on a coffee before, it is a uh, beef. <laughs> our coffees have cooled down. Let's start tasting. This spoon has been through so much with me. It has cupped so many interesting things. I sometimes feel the need to apologize to my cupping and coffee equipment for how much they have to go through with me. <laughs> now, just eyeballing them, there are two that are significantly lighter than the rest. This one right here, our weird blend of like sprinkles, if you will, and dried strawberries, and our one over here. This one was significantly lighter in roast than the rest of them, so that makes sense. Usually the coffee will also look and appear a little bit lighter. This one, I think is lighter, simply because there's not nearly as much just coffee in it. If you'll remember, we have sprinkles and saffron and large chunks of dried strawberry. So I'm not expecting this one to taste as coffee forward as the rest of them. At this point, I'm just stalling. So I better get started. That's intense. You know those like, like old chocolate counters where you have all your like truffles and like delicate little chocolates on display. If you have ever had a chocolate cherry truffle, that's what that tastes like. It is not unpleasant. In fact, it's kind of nice. I would add some cream to it. I think that would be like pretty solid. Next up, we have our bubblegum coffee, which if you will remember, had chunks of the flavoring in the coffee, not necessarily coating the coffee, but inside the coffee. Interesting. The texture of the coffee is a little bit thicker. I'd say this is this is a pretty like silky, velvety coffee. Fascinating. It does taste like bubblegum. 
it is lightly sweet. In fact, it doesn't just taste like, you know, there, there's a difference between something being the flavor of something sweet and actually having sweetness in it. This does taste like it has a good amount of like sweetness added to it, which is kind of pleasant. It is nicely balanced, like they said. That is not so bad. I would also probably argue that this company took the most care into creating what they were creating because this is a company that is pretty much dedicated to making like interesting flavors of coffee. For what it is, well done. Now, just to be clear, this next coffee does have dissolved sprinkles brewed into the coffee. Oh, that is sweet indeed. That is, I don't know what I was expecting. It tastes a little bit like the Cisco fruit punch you have as a kid, either at school or at like an outdoors camp. <laughs> if you've ever had Cisco purple in your life, which is what we like to call the just mixed fruit punch that Cisco Food Services uh, likes to deliver, this tastes a lot like Cisco purple. <laughs> and if that awakens some deep childhood memory, I'm very sorry, or you're welcome, I don't know. Yeah, I think any, I think any child would even enjoy that, honestly. Now, if you remember, right, strawberry, saffron, and sprinkles. I would not describe this as tasting like strawberry cotton candy at all. I think it just tastes like assorted fruit punch. I wouldn't even describe it as tasting like coffee. It's it's a uh, there's there's very little bitterness in it. There's a there's a lot of sugar. <laughs> in fact, this says that each cup of coffee has five calories in it. So there's that. A part of me wants to stay with these arguably much more comfortable coffees and ignore the ones over here. But I promised that I would try these. I think it's time for me to just bite the bullet and go for it. So first up, we have our jalapeno coconut coffee. I love jalapenos. I love spicy things. I'm not so much a coconut person, so this will be interesting. It smells spicy. It doesn't really smell too much like coconut at this point with it brewed, but it does indeed have that like kind of like back of the nose, like spice from the jalapeno. That's actually significantly noticeable just in the aromatics. I'm nervous. I hate the fact that I kind of like that. Now you don't feel the spice at all with this. Like you don't get any of that kind of like back of the mouth sort of burn that you might have if you were eating a jalapeno. You do have the pretty distinct flavor of it. The coconut is not so much like a coconut flavor, but it's more like kind of a balancing, like smoothing agent. I feel like if it was just jalapeno coffee, we'd be in for an interesting ride, but it's not. It's jalapeno coconut. And those two flavors do kind of, interestingly enough, balance each other out in kind of a nice way. That's shocking. That's truly shocking to me. Will the spicy taco coffee match up to it? I guess it's time to find out. This is the only time that I will be tasting a coffee that is described as beefy. I just want everyone to know that. Would it be rude to dump that out in the sink? I'm gonna make a very strong statement and say that this should not exist. <laughs> this is a highly, highly concerning combination of flavors in liquid form that I am personally not here to endorse. <laughs> Some part of my body had hopes that this would be potentially a good thing. This could be like, the jalapeno coconut coffee was shockingly okay. The spicy taco coffee, maybe not so much. There is, I think, something so inherently wrong about seeing a cup of coffee and tasting it and then just getting like, taco spice in your mouth like that is a that is my brain is having a hard time like wrapping itself around that like combination of like sensory things and smell things and taste things all at once like i feel like i'm overloading a little bit like i feel like i'm about to like fritz out a little bit maybe no to this one <laughs> the rest of these however kind of interesting now one is more than welcome to stick with their traditional coffee unflavored coffee that is and i might actually suggest that i think flavors come through a lot better when you add them separately whether in the form of like some sort of infusion or perhaps a syrup or a creamer or whatever you were doing but there are some interesting flavors out there i don't know if i will become a flavored coffee drinker. This was a very interesting experiment. I think there are a lot of flavors that can be very accurately portrayed through coffee. The question really is, should you portray those flavors through coffee? I think sometimes the answer is maybe, and I think sometimes the answer is very clearly no, <laughs> one should not. <laughs> that being said, I hope you had a good time today. I hope you learned about some interesting flavors, and I hope you learned a little bit more about flavored coffee on a whole. I'm gonna go cleanse my palate. I'm gonna go cleanse my coffee machine. I'm gonna go cleanse my grinder. I think we're just gonna have a nice, a nice deep cleaning session today <laughs> just to purge my kitchen from the weird smells and aromas that are happening right now. I can't tell you that I'm gonna go off screen and drink the rest of this cup of coffee. I'm not. However, I am gonna go make my partner taste it because I think that would be very fun. Now, 
I hope you have a good rest of your week. I am Morgan Drinks Coffee. I'm here on YouTube once a week with a full video as well as shorts. So subscribe if you'd like to see more. If not, you're welcome to find me on TikTok and Instagram where I post content almost every single day. There's also tons of stuff in the description, lots of fun links, surprises, things that are going on, all sorts of good stuff. So until next time, I hope you have a fantastic week and I will see you next week. <laughs> Enjoy. What is this? Am I allowed to know? Just take a sip. Okay. Just have a, have a drink. <laughs> Thoughts, feelings, concerns. Oh, there's, there's a kick in there. <laughs> the very end. <laughs> it smells pretty good. Do you think it should exist? Maybe. Yeah. No. <laughs> I think so. No, I do not back this opinion. <laughs> Please don't drink it all. It's pretty good. Please actually. don't drink it all. I'm gonna take this away from you now.